Well, as we all know, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and today I'm here at the UF Health Proton Therapy Institute to hear about what they describe as an effective alternative to traditional radiation. And Dr. Julie Bradley is a radiation oncologist with UF Health Proton Therapy Institute to walk us through this. Thanks so much for joining us today. Yes, it's a pleasure. I know you talk about this all year long, but October, everybody really has an extra focus on this. You must be very busy. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so let's talk about what types of breast cancer in particular can be treated with proton therapy because not all breast cancers are good candidates. That's right, but proton therapy is a good option for many women. It can be used to treat stage 1, 2, or 3 breast cancer and it can be used um, for any type of breast cancer. So breast cancer can be described as triple negative, triple positive, ERPR positive, HER2 positive or negative. And, and while those parameters are very important for directing therapy, um, they all can be treated using proton therapy. We use proton therapy both after a lumpectomy, where just part of the breast tissue is removed, as well as after a mastectomy, where the breast is removed. Um, and sometimes after the breast is removed, a woman will choose to have a reconstruction with either an implant or an expander. And with either type of reconstruction or with no reconstruction, proton therapy can be a good option. And we're talking proton therapy, and as I mentioned uh, earlier, as an alternative to traditional radiation. So can you walk us through the difference and, and why some patients would want to uh, choose proton therapy over traditional radiation? Yeah, so proton therapy is, is another form of radiation. So it works against the tumor cells in a very similar manner to the traditional radiation but we have more control over where the beam uh, deposits its energy. And the heart and the lungs sit very close to the breast mm -hmm. and the chest wall tissue. And with traditional radiation, um, one of our challenges is to get the radiation dose we need to uh, those lymph node areas and the breast or chest wall, but avoid the heart and lung tissue that sits right adjacent. Um, with proton therapy, we have the ability to sculpt the dose along that back edge of the breast or the chest wall and minimize and in some cases eliminate dose to um, both the heart and the lung. Now I've seen the proton beam equipment. It's a pretty big piece of equipment. Is it in the equipment that the delivery is different or is it in the actual molecule radiation material that's going in you. Yeah, so it is a, a different machine that generates a proton compared to one that generates a photon, which is the traditional radiation. But the difference is inherent to the proton itself. It has a unique property where it distributes um, just a little bit of dose on, the w on its way to the target. And then when it gets to the area that needs the treatment, it deposits the majority of its energy and then it stops. So there's no exit dose. And that's how we can treat that entire um, volume of the breast or the chest wall and avoid that heart and lung that sit right behind it. Whereas a photon, the traditional radiation, has an entrance and an exit dose. It mm. doesn't have any mass, so it just goes through and through, um, and, and the heart and the lung um, can receive some effect from that. Dr. Bradley, what are some of the success rates for breast cancer patients who are being treated with proton therapy? So we've been using proton therapy for breast cancer for over five years now and have had very good success in outcomes that are equivalent in disease control to the, uh, those we had with traditional radiation. Mm -hmm. Our primary goal of proton therapy is to decrease the risk of injury to the heart and to mm -hmm. the lung. And those uh, side effects from radiation may not develop for 10 years or more after the radiation is given. So we have some clinical trials open here to try to identify any injury to those organs sooner before somebody becomes symptomatic or develops a problem from uh, any heart or lung injury. And uh, one of those trials is using cardiac MRI to assess the heart before and after radiation, and the other is using chest CT to look for um, small changes in the lung that could be developing uh, within a few years after radiation. Well, that's an added benefit that a patient can participate in these clinical trials while receiving treatment. Yes, absolutely. All right, well, Dr. Riley, thank you so much for joining us. I know you're pretty busy as always, but particularly during the month of October, sharing all of your wonderful knowledge. And of course, we'd like to thank UF Health Proton Therapy Institute for sponsoring this segment. And for more information, you can visit floridaproton.org or give them a call to find out more about treatment or these clinical trials at 904-588-1436.